guys, it's Sage. Our goal today is to get the crankshaft out, but to do that, we have to take off the flywheel and the rear engine plate, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Just as a recap, in the last episode, we got the timing chain and gears off, and we also were able to get the camshaft out. The book was honestly a little bit unclear about what we had to do, so we're gonna use our intuition and figure out what needs to come undone. First, we're gonna start by removing these outer screws, but because this whole thing moves a bunch, we're gonna put a block underneath to keep the crankshaft from moving. These are super tricky, so my dad is just cracking them for me so I can undo them. I'm almost done taking out the last screw and I'm supporting it here with my wrist just in case it should be on dowel so it shouldn't fall out. Yeah, it looks pretty stable so we're probably just gonna have to pry this off of here. Now I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and try and wedge it off. <laughs> off and it is a lot heavier than I was expecting so when it came off it did end up falling but it looks all right. We are gonna put the block back in so that I can go ahead and take these bolts off and it will be stable and then the flywheel should be able to just pop. <laughs> Now I'm going to undo all of these bolts to take this end plate off. I went ahead and took the nuts and washers off of these ones and now I'm going to undo these bolts. Looks like it's on dowels as well. So we're just gonna need to, oh, maybe not. <laughs> I literally barely touched it. All right, I'm not gonna drop it. All right, there we go. Very cool. You can take a look in there. Nice. We decided in order to get to the main bearing caps easier, we're gonna flip the whole block on its side so that we can access the underneath better. And we're just gonna be sure not to bump any of these bits. So we're gonna keep them in the middle. Um, it's leaking just a bit. <laughs> oh wow, this is a cool view. Look at that. Oh my God, it's leaking so bad. Oh my God. Since we wanna take everything out anyways, we're going to undo this and all the main bearing cap bolts. And now that it's on its side, the whole crank spins freely and you can see this main issue over here. But of course we're gonna pull it out and have a machine shop check it out properly. I'm gonna start by undoing these screws. We probably could have taken off the big end cap bolts anyways, but since we wanna take everything apart and clean it, I'm gonna go ahead and start with these. <laughs> Don't fly too 
is there are seven bolts here that we need to undo that will take this plate out and then the crankshaft can be pulled right out. Something to note, this one has a bearing in it and the other two don't. Uh, oh, this one is right there, I can see it now. Okay, I can see they actually both have it, I just wasn't able to get them out. Okay, so we'll pry them. I'm gonna turn that and you just see if it's okay. gonna fall out. Oh, okay, there's one. All right, so these do have them. Oh, there we go, okay. What I'm gonna do now, since the crankshaft is loose and it could fall out, as I take off these bolts and take this plate off, I'm gonna have my dad hold this and then he's gonna take the crankshaft out because we don't wanna risk it falling. Pull this out, but watch out, those other bits might fall. Main bearings might come out. Oh, from the other side. You are so right. Yep. Okay. There's the little ones. Here is the crank out. One, two, three here. Three is where we had the problem, and you can see that's the little spot there. But then on the other side, there's clearly some abrasion. There was some rubbing. So... We know something went on with that one. From what we can see, just glancing at it really quick, it doesn't seem like there's anything alarming. We'll see if so, how out of round it is and if they can machine this back down. Yeah. Although, you know, we don't know. If yeah, that's totally not a circle like these are. And that one is really different. So we'll see what the machine shop has to say. Here is what the block is looking like. Obviously the biggest question from everyone and from myself is, is the block cracked? Is it gonna be able to be saved? What is the true damage? So now we can finally get in here. I'm gonna try and show you guys up here. There's clearly some hitting, some damage up here. I don't know how severe that is obviously, but that's what it looks like. This is where the third was. And then I wanna show you here. There is some damage. And I had a few people asking if my cylinders were sleeves. It doesn't look like it. So if the engine isn't cracked, I wanna know if I'm gonna be able to rebore these, if it's gonna be able to be saved, or if that's gonna affect like the engine performance or reliability. So let me know if you guys see anything alarming. Obviously I will be taking this into a machine shop, but let me know what you guys think. It's me from the future and I wanted to say, I know I keep saying, oh, take it to the machine shop, blah, 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 but we actually don't know exactly where we're taking the stuff yet. So I wanted to let you guys give me some recommendations. You can tell me machine shops you've went to, heard good things about, if you guys work at one or if you guys are able or qualified to tell me what is saveable and what I need to fix. I would absolutely love that. I'm hoping somewhere in the GTA area or Southern Ontario, but I am happy to make a trip. It's just little parts now, so we'll be able to just drive it to wherever we need to go. So let me know if you guys recommend any machine shops or mechanics or places that I should take all of my engine parts. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. I am super happy with what we got done. The crankshaft is finally out and we are almost ready to take it in to a machine shop. The next episode, we are going to be cleaning up all the 49 year old gunk that is on there and we're gonna be getting it everything ready to take into a shop. We're gonna do a little self assessment to find out you know, what we think is savable, but of course we are going to consult a professional. But we'll see you next episode.